It's not what I wanted. <laughs> I know. <laughs> ah, not what I wanted. Sorry. That lady be wearing boy clothes. Yeah, it's confusing. So I say you and I like girl clothes. We think girl clothes are cute, don't you? Okay. And so we wear what we choose. But no, I'm not laughing at anybody. I'm laughing because I'm joyful. I love girl clothes. I think my green shoes and my green pants <laughs> are cute. <laughs> and my jacket, oh, I love it. It's so scary. So it's time, we're a little bit late, but it's time for um, back in the library. And so this, uh, this we're going, we're part of summer reading and so summer reading, our um, theme is oceans of possibilities. Oh, wow. So it's all about the ocean and things that go on in the ocean. And so um, I'm really excited to be here today and to share a couple books. Uh, one is A Beach Tale by Karen Williams. And then the... Um, and the other book is called Amos and Boris. So which one would you like to hear first? What? Uh, beach Tale? The Beach Tale, okay. So uh, what do you think is gonna happen in this story? I think it's gonna go good, and it's gonna be like bullying, or like laughing about and I think it's going to be by a boat and the ocean water. How do you know that water too? Okay, let's see if you're you're right. So, um, yeah, so it's a beach tail. It's a tail, and it's spelled T A I L. Do you know what that? If it's a, if they're you, the same sound can be spelled T A I L which is tail. like a tail of an of a fish or an or, or an animal. Yeah. Yeah, cats and dogs. Or tail can also be spelled T A L E. If it's T A L E, do you know what that is? How it 
How is it different? It sounds the same. You pronounce it the same. It's tail. What? Story. Yep, story. It's a tail is another word for story. Yep, you're right. So it so this in a way this is kind of a funny title because it's a story, which is a tail, which sounds the same, and it says a beach tail. So so it's kind of funny, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's T A L E. It sounds like T A L E, but this one's spelled T A I L. So something is gonna have. What do you think? Do you think there's something that's going to have a T A I L E in it? T I T A I L. Do you think it's what do you yeah. think is to be in this? Yeah. Okay. So, yep. We've got the ocean. You're right about the ocean and the water. And so it says, what's that? Shape. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a lion. It's kind of hard to tell. Swish, swish. Gregory drew a lion in the sand. So good job. I'm guessing it. Yeah. A sea lion? Dad asked. A sandy lion, Gregory said. Sandy means a T A I L. Tail. Tail, said Dad. Gregory picked up his sturdy drawing stick. Don't go in the water and don't leave Sandy. So who's Sandy? The sand. The lion, right? She's not supposed to leave the lion. Oh. I won't, said Gregory. Dad sat down on the dolphin towel under the blue umbrella. So a dolphin towel. That's kind of fun, huh? Hmm? Sandy, yeah. A sea lion, he said, a sandy lion. And Sandy needs a tail. Swish, swish. Gregory drew a tail. He did not go in the water and he did not leave Sandy. Sandy's tail got longer until Gregory came to a purple. Do you know what that is? Purple quid. Mm, could look like kind of like a quid. Oh no, a jellyfish. Yeah, a jellyfish. He made a loop around the gooey blob. So did Sandy's tail. So is he leaving Sandy? No. Because he's got Sandy's what? He's drawing Sandy's what? Tail. Tail. Okay. Swish swish. Gregory came to the mound of an old castle, washed smooth by the waves. He went up and over and down. So did Sandy's tail. But Gregory did not go into the water and he did not leave who? He did not. Yeah, he did not leave Sandy. Until Sandy's tail got longer. Until Gregory came to a horseshoe crab. He made a big zigzag and then a zag around that old crab's pointer. Sandy's tail went zigzag too. Swish, swish. Gregory came to a giant hole. Gregory went down and up, and so did Sandy's tail. So there's, what is that? What is that? Horseshoe crab. That's a crab. Oh, you're right, it doesn't, does it? Hmm. Yeah. No, you're right. So why why did he say crab? A horseshoe crab. Crazy Because Andy's tail got longer until Gregory saw a tiny ghost crab. Now this one looks like a crab. Scurry sideways into his dark round hole. Gregory went round and round the hole. Sandy's tail went round and round too. But Gregory did not go in the water. And he did not leave who? Sandy. I'm going to look up that horseshoe crab and see what it looks like because that's got me puzzled too because it doesn't really look like a crab. You're right. Swish, swish. Gregory wrote his name, nickname G R E G. Sandy's tail got what? Longer. 
Suddenly, a wave snuck up onto the sand to tickle Gregory's toes. Gregory jumped back and traced the lacy wave line. Sandy's tail made a wavy line, too, but Gregory did not go in what? The water. And he did not be Sandy. Yeah, he did not leave Sandy. He wasn't supposed to go in the water, and he wasn't supposed to leave Sandy. Boy, seems like he's going pretty long way. Long tail, huh? Swish, swish. Sandy's tail got longer until Gregory came to a jetty. He heard a loud roar. Gregory looked up. A giant wave crashed onto the rocks. The spray splashed Greg Gregory. Do you know what a jetty is? A jet. J E T T Y? Hmm, I'm not sure what a jetty is. It's another word we can look up. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Finding out new words. Yeah. He turned around to look for Dad. Dad. Uh oh! Too. What now? He looked up and he can't find Dad. Oh. All he sees are all those umbrellas. Can he solve the problem? What's he going to do? Yeah. Idea. <laughs> swish, swish. Gregory followed Sandy's tail. That's what you did. <laughs> he followed the wavy line. Swish, swish. He traced his nickname backward. G R E G. He went around and around the deep, dark ghost crab hole. Ghost crab hole. <laughs> she can't figure it out. He followed the line. Swish, swish. He went down into the giant hole and up again. Zag and then zig. He went around the horseshoe. Crab's right. pointer. It's saying the same thing. What does I know crab. Hmm. I want to look it up. I want to look it up. Uh-oh. Gregory looked down the beach. No, Sandy. No, Dad and the dolphin towel under the blue umbrella. But, so what's the but? What's he gonna do? He's gonna find him, but what is he gonna do? Gregory sound the saw the mound of the old castle washed smooth by the waves. So he was just swish, swish. He went up and over and down and there was Sandy's tail in a loop around the gooey purple jellyfish. So is he going back the way he came? Did you find the answer? Yes, that it is a horseshoe crab. It is kind of in the shape of a horseshoe. Oh, oh, okay. So we learned something about the crab. They can look like that. Thank you for looking that up. That's what I like to do is answer my questions. Swish, swish, Gregory followed the loop, and then he came to who? Who was that? Sandy. Sandy. Uh-oh. What's the uh-oh about? <laughs> Gregory looked up. There was the blue umbrella. There was the dolphin's tail. See? See the dolphin's tail towel? Dad waved. Sandy has a long <laughs> tail, he said. <laughs> I didn't go in the water, Gregory said. But Sandy got what, he added. Dad held Gregory's hand. Let's get wet, too. So what did you think of that story? Was it great? Is it fun? What was what did you like about it? Um, we did like Sandy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did what his dad said. Yeah, and we learned what he was going to do to the answers. <laughs> So, 
Did you think, question is, did you think that that dad was, if he couldn't see dad, could dad see him? Nope. I think as a mom, I would say yes. <laughs> a lot of times, children don't know that we're one. Because we love them. One time, one time, we, we went to the beach, and she said her kid was lost, and his name was straight three on the sidewalk, and she left the kid. Oh, and she didn't even know. Well, that's a rare case. But most times, parents, So did he trust his son with do what he said? Did he yeah. trust him? Was he right about his kid? What? Was what? he right about his kid? Did his kid was his kid trustworthy? Did he do what he told him to do? He made sure that he never left who? Sandy and he never went where? In the what? In the water. And I think the Dad was at an advantage because he could see this little spot of this kid all the way down. Yeah. And where his dad was, there were what a whole bunch of umbrellas. Right. He couldn't see. So, but the dad, dad could see. Yeah. But his dad could see him. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I don't know. I I think it might have been hard for me. To watch my kids, especially near the water. I mean, if he knew to, how to swim, that would be one thing. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Just fine. I'm not that strong. <laughs> I'm <not sure>. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> but are dads different than moms? Yes. So you look at all the umbrellas. So it was a lot yeah. harder for him to see his dad because there are a lot of umbrellas there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But dad, dads are more likely to push them out, let them right. try things, let them do things. Mm -hmm. And that's why they need both that's moms and dads. Because the moms, they have to compromise. At least that's my opinion. Here's something we all can do. No. Okay. William speaks. Show him here. Okay, Amos and Boris, what do you think it's about? A boat in the ocean. And what's on the boat? A little boy. Mm -hmm. Do not leave somebody else. Don't think it's a boy. What is it? Mouse. <laughs> Amos, a mouse, you're right, lived on by the ocean. He loved the ocean. He loved the smell of sea air. He loved to hear the surf sound. Crash. The bursting breakers, the backwashes, the rolling pebbles. What's backwash? Like when the water comes to the out goes out and go then it in. comes back, right? Yeah, it goes out and then out and come back. Yeah. Okay, so that's what he did. He loved a boat. He thought a lot about the ocean and he wondered about the faraway places on the other side of the water. One day he started building a boat on the beach. He worked on it in the daytime, while at night he studied navigation. You know what navigation is? No. Navigation is how you find your way. Navigate is how to find your way in the water. So that navigation is find how to find your way. When the boat was finished, he loaded it with cheese, biscuits, acorns, honey, white germ, two barrels of fresh water, a compass, a sextant, 
What's a compass and a sextant? You know what they are? Tell you where you are. A compass will tell you if, if you're going what? North, south, east, or west. And a sextant helps you measure dis distances. A telescope, a saw, a hammer, and nails, and some wood in case repairs should be necessary. A needle and a thread for mending torn sails and various other necessities such as bandages and iodine, a yo-yo, and playing cards. Why would you need the yo-yo and playing cards? Don't know. Maybe if you got bored? <laughs> oh. On the 6th of September, with a very calm sea, he waited till the high tide had almost reached his boat. And then using his most savage strength, he just managed to push the boat into the water, climb on board, and set sail. See, there he is. He's pushing it. So the water came all the way up, almost up to the boat, and then he pushed it out. The rodent, for that was the boat's name, proved to be very well made and very well suited to the sea. And Amos, after one miserable day of seasickness, what seasickness is? Do you know what that is? Like when you get in the water, you get sick. Yeah. Throw the motion going up and down, up and down sometimes makes people sick. Some people get car sick from bouncing around and going corners and everything in the car. Some people get seasick. Some people get seasick. Car sick. And Amos, after one, um, so he proved to be a natural sailor, very well suited to the ship. He was enjoying his trip immensely. It was beautiful weather, day and night. He moved up and down, up and down on waves as big as mountains. And he was full of wonder, full of enterprise, and full of love for life. Was he happy out there? Yep. <laughs> one night, in a Phosphorescent sea. What's a phosphorescent? I do not know. You want to look it up? Can look it up. What's a phosphorescent sea? He marveled at the sight of some whales spouting luminous water, and later, lying on the deck of his boat, raised, gazing at the immense starry sky. The tiny little mouse Amos, a little speck of a living thing in the vast living universe felt thoroughly, thoroughly akin to it all. Overwhelmed by the beauty and mystery of everything, he rolled over and over and right off the deck of his boat and into the sea. What is that? Did you find what the word is? What is phosphorescent? Oh, phosphorescent. Ask for acid. Phosphorescent, you said three. Oh, here. Here. Yeah, phosphorescent. Oh, that's Ooh, look at that. Look. She found a phosphorescent. Because the beautiful color. See how the color is? It's bright and shiny. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So what did he say when he got in the water all by himself? What did he say? <gasps> Help! Oh, he squeaked as he grabbed <laughs> desperately at the road, but he evaded his grasp and went falling along under full sail and he never saw it again. Wow. And there he was. Where? In the middle of the immense ocean, a thousand miles from the nearest shore, where no one else in sight as far as the eye could see, and not even so much as a stick of driftwood to hold on to. Should I try to swim home? What do you think? Should he try to swim home? Probably. Amos wondered, <laughs> or should I just try to stay afloat? <laughs> he All might right. swim a mile, but never a thousand. He decided to just keep afloat, treading water and hoping that something, who knows what, would turn up to save him. But what if a shark, or some big fish, or a horse mackerel turned up? 
What was he supposed to do to protect himself? He didn't know. What do, what do sharks have? Teeth. Uh-oh. Would they eat a mouse, do you think? <laughs> oh, morning came, as it always does. He was getting terribly tired. He was so very small, very cold, very wet, and worried mouse. There was still nothing inside but the empty sea. Uh, then, as if things weren't bad enough, it began to what? Circle down. Rain. <laughs> rain. At last, the rain stopped, and the noonday sun gave him a bit of cheer and warmth in the vast loneliness. But his strength was giving out. He began to wonder, what would it be like to drown? Would it take very long? Would it feel just awful? Would his soul go to heaven? Would there be other mice there? Oh. Hmm, as he was asking himself these dreadful questions, a huge head burst through the surface of the water oh. and loomed up over him. It was a whale. Wow. What sort of fish are you? The whale asked. You must be one of a kind. I'm not a fish, said Amos. I'm a mouse, which is a mammal, the highest form of life. I live on land. Holy clam and cuttlefish, said the whale. I'm a mammal myself, though I live in the sea. Call me... Yeah, call me Boris, he added. <laughs> so does he look like a sound like a friendly guy or an unfriendly guy? <laughs> Amos introduced himself and told Boris how he came to be there in the middle of the ocean. The whale said he would be happy to take Amos to the Ivory Coast of Africa, where he happened to be headed anyway to attend a meeting of whales from all the seven seas. But Amos said he'd had enough adventure to last him a while. He wanted only to get back home and hoped the whale wouldn't mind going out of his way to take him there. Not only would I not mind, said Boris, I would consider it a privilege. What other whale in all the world ever had the chance to get to know such a strange creature as you. Please climb, climb aboard. And Amos got on Boris's back. Are you sure you're a mammal? Amos asked. You smell more like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> then Boris the whale went swimming along with Amos the mouse on his what? Back. <laughs> B-A-C-K, back. Can you say spell back? B A C K. What a relief to be safe, so secure again. Amos lay down in the sun and began, and being worn to a frazzle, he was soon a what? A sleep. Sleep. How did he then? Oh, what's going to happen? His tail's... What's happened to Amos? Slimming. <laughs> All of a sudden, he was in the water again. Wide away, spluttering and splashing about. Boris had forgotten for a moment that he had a passenger on his back and sounded. So what is sounding? Whales sound. They go underwater and sound. It goes down below. <clears throat> when he realized his mistake, he surfaced so quickly that Amos was set somersaulting tail over whiskers high into the air hitting the water it hurt crazy with rage <coughs> amos screamed and punched at boris until he remembered he owed his life to the whale and quietly i guess it's the otter oh, it's it's So from then on, whenever Boris wanted to sound, what's sounding? 
And he go, he's going to go where? He's going to sound. He's going to go where? And under the water. He warned Amos in advance and got his okay. And whenever he sounded, Amos took a what? A swim. <clears throat> he took a swim. Swimming along, sometimes at great speed, sometimes slowly and leisurely, <clears throat> sometimes rusty, and exchanging ideas, sometimes stopping to sleep. It took them a week to reach Amos's home shore. During that time, they developed a deep admiration for one another. Forrest admired the delicacy, the quivering daintiness, the light touch, the small voice, the gem-like radiance of the mouse. Amos admired the bulk, the grandeur, the power, the purpose, the rich voice, and the abounding friendliness of the whale. They became the closest possible friends. They told each other about their lives, their ambitions. They shared their deepest secrets with each other. The whale was very curious about life on land and was sorry that he could never experience it. Amos was fascinated by the whale's accounts of what went on deep under the sea. Amos sometimes enjoyed running up and down the whale's back for exercise. When he was hungry, he ate plankton. The only thing he missed was fresh, unsalty water. <laughs> oh, so they became friends. How could a, how could a mouse and a whale become friends? If, um, if he was like, the other person was like, and then they and then they think it's funny, or mm -hmm. the person is friendly, the person is being nice, they become friends, mm -hmm. and they tell people their secrets. Yeah. Um, oh, you know all of that. Yeah. Yes. You know a lot about friendship. You know a lot. Oh, I'm learning. Thank yeah. you. It was put really well. Yeah, my best friend. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's so nice of you. The time came to say what? Oh. He's there, so what is he going to have to say? Bye. Goodbye. They you went at the home. shore. I wish we could be friends forever, said Boris. We will be friends forever, but we can't be together. You must live on land, and I must live at sea. I'll never forget you, though. And you can be sure I'll never forget you, said Amos. I will always be grateful for you, to you for saving my life. And I want you to remember that if you ever need my help, I'd be more than glad to give it. How could he ever possibly help Boris? Amos didn't know, but he knew how willing he was. How are you supposed to be calling him? The whale couldn't take Amos all the way to land, so they said last goodbyes, and Amos dived off Boris's back and swam to the sand. From the top of a cliff, he watched Boris spout twice. What's spouting? Like flipping the spout. A little water. Yep, they have a little water hole in the top. Oh, they yeah. shoot all the extra water out, so that's called spouting. So what is so that they called? Spouting. So when when they put the water in their mouth. They, um, I think they drink it and it comes up. They shoot it. Yeah, they, they shoot it out. Yeah. They splash off. He spotted it twice and disappeared. Boris laughed to himself. How could that little mouse ever help me? Little as he is, he's all heart. I love him and I'll miss him terribly. Boris went to the conference of the Ivory Coast of Africa and then went back to a life of wailing about while Amos returned to his life of mousing about. And they were both what? Happy. Oh. So they were both happy. Except they missed each other. Many years after the incidents just described, what's an incident? Like they made a oopsie doopsie. An incident is when something happens. You're right. An oopsie doopsie or something happens is called an incident. Or a bad one. A good one could be a bad one or a good one. When Amos was no longer a very young mouse, and when Boris was no longer a very young whale, there occurred one of the worst storms of the century. How long is a century? A century is a hundred years. Yeah. A hundred years. Hurricane Yana! 
And it just so happened that Forrest the Whale was flung ashore by a tidal wave, a huge wave, and stranded on the very shore where Amos happened to make his home. So he's on the stranded on, stranded on the shore. This big whale. Can he swim without water? No. No. It just so happened that when the storm had cleared up and Boris was lying high and dry on the sand, losing his moisture in the hot sun and needing desperately to be back in the water, Amos came down to the beach to see how much damage Hurricane Yada had done. Of course, Boris and Amos recognized each other at once. I don't have to tell you how these old fellow friends felt at meeting again in this desperate situation. Amos rushed towards Boris. Boris could only look at Amos. Amos, help me, said the mountain of a whale to the moat of a mouse. <laughs> I think I'll die if I don't get back in the water soon. Amos gazed at Boris in an agony of pity. He realized he had to do something very fast, and he had to think very fast about what it was he had to do. Suddenly, he was gone. I'm afraid he won't be able to help me, said Boris to himself. Much as he wants to do something, what can a little fellow do? What can he do? Try to push him in a pool here. Mm, that's a thought. You could try. Just as Amos had once felt all alone in the middle of the ocean, Boris now felt lying alone on the shore. He was sure he would die. And he, just as he was preparing to die, <gasps> Amos came racing back with two of the biggest elephants he could find because he was off of where africa right yes i had elephants and he was off that one so he yeah. came with two elephants without wasting time these two good-hearted elephants got to pushing with all their might as boris's huge body until he began turning over breed uh breeded with the sand and rolling down toward the sea. Amos, standing on the head of one of the elephants, yelled instructions, but no one heard him. <laughs> in a few minutes, Boris was already in water with waves washing at him, and he was feeling the wondrous wetness. You have to be out of the sea, really, to know how good it is to be in it, he thought. That is, if you're a whale. Soon he was able to wiggle and wriggle into deeper water. There he is. There's those elephants, boy. I guess they're not afraid of water, apparently. He looked back at Amos on the elephant's head. Tears were rolling down the great whale's cheeks. The tiny mouse had tears in his eyes, too. Goodbye, dear friend, squeaked Amos. Goodbye, dear friend, rumbled Boris and he disappeared in the waves. They knew they might never meet again. They knew they would never, ever forget each other. Aww. And I wanted to share something with you. So well, talk a little bit about the book. What do you think about the book? What do you think about the story? It was cool, it was awesome, she gave me all the answers, and it was awesome. Mm. So, and I learned to be friends with people. What? Say that now because you can be friends with people. Yeah, even if they're different, but you're bigger or smaller, you you have to just decide. But you know what? Something's very. I happened to um, find out um, by quite by accident, and um, I found out that actually. This story is based on something that happens with, uh, with punchback whales. Um, uh, 
Hunchback whales. Oh, I thought I did I close that by mistake? Okay, so yeah, I think I closed it by mistake. YouTube. But you said hunchback whales. Yeah, uh, yeah. Shop up the savings on outdoor fun with Oriental Trading. Go buggy for hundreds of all in one summer. There is um there is an incident that happened where um uh a humpback whale this woman she uh was always in she was a diver mm -hmm. and she was in the ocean and she was studying the ocean and she she studied all the creatures in the ocean and she was studying a hunchback whale and um So I found it and then I must have closed it. Uh, see if I can find it. Um, I was in shock. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to look it up and put my own. Oh, okay. Yeah, so a hunchback right whale. Great company this morning. Nan Hauser is a marine biologist known as the okay. Whale Lady. She has dedicated 25 yeah. years to studying well, whales and dolphins so they, in they've the Cook done. Islands. They've, they've tried, they're investigating what is it that they've, they've sailed dolphins, but he was kept pushing her, pushing her when she was in the water. Oh, fuck you up. Wow. And, and she was like, why is he pushing me? And she was like freaking out. She always stayed her distance from the whales and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden she noticed there was a shark. Wow. He was herding her away from sharks. And they found a humpback whale. They want to investigate whether they have altruistic, I mean, thinking about, mm -hmm. but they do that for, they've done it for seals. They've done it for um, all kinds of other creatures in the seal, in the wow. sea. So, yeah, so you can tell her. So we have some fish. Well, we have a one really big one. Mom and dad. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah, so that is. And you finish? Yeah, you can hang it up on there. You have coloring pencils at home, okay? Mom is waiting. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I'm sorry. It took me a little bit longer. You can take the pictures. You have coloring pencils at home. Mom brought you some. And I gave you some. Did you give me some? Well, and mom bought you something that you brought to the house one day and we covered with them. Okay. Oh, those ones? Mm hmm. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah. So, anyway, but so that, that, so some things, some creatures do that. So, that is, and I wonder if that's where they got this idea of the story. Is the island where they got it all from? Yeah. So, we would do that. Isn't that amazing that, yeah.
YouTube. Usually bras fit small chested women like this. Gapping, you guys. Look Cook Islands, South Pacific. Every summer, these warm waters attract an epic ocean titan on its yearly migration, the humpback whale. Estimates are there's about 40,000 humpback whales in the oceans. Their populations were decimated by whaling now for the most part they're protected. One of the things that allows them to be protected is there are a good number of ecotourism outfits that will take you out to put you in the path of whales so you can see them as they swim by you. Diver and whale biologist Nan Hauser regularly travels to the islands to study whale behavior. And on this trip, she's found what she's looking for, a lone humpback whale. Nan knows, in the presence of this enormous animal, for safety, she needs to observe from a distance. I'm very strict about don't touch the animals that you study. Don't get in the way. But this whale isn't respecting Nan's personal space. After briefly surfacing, he turns toward Nan and starts to approach. It's a never before seen behavior that's both fascinating and frightening. He swims up to me, and he keeps swimming, and he's swimming, and he's swimming, and he's swimming. He doesn't stop. And pretty soon, I'm like right up against his nose. And so I can't push a 50,000 pound animal out of the way. You're just a tiny, tiny little fly next to them. At the same time, I'm laughing inside. I'm totally panicked. Humpback whales are enormous creatures. They can be up to 52 feet long and weigh 60,000 pounds. It's just a giant animal. It's like a school bus. If you get in front of the school bus by accident, you're, you're getting hurt. I knew something was up, and I didn't know what. Amazingly, the reason for the whale's bizarre and dangerous behavior could be protection. Above water, the dive boat has spotted a tiger shark circling the area. And while Nan is totally unaware of the shark's presence, the whale may be trying to push her towards safety. And then, as the shark circles, the whale does the unthinkable. Reaching underneath, he lifts Nan out of the water. <laughs> The situation is getting out of hand. A whale protecting a person is like an elephant protecting a puppy. The whale, completely unaware of its own strength, could kill or seriously injure Nan, the very person the whale wants to protect. A humpback, they just go like that with their pectoral fin or with their tail flute. I mean, it ruptures your organs, breaks your bones, and you're dead. <laughs> While it's very difficult to quantify, the experience of people like this diver sure seem to point to the capacity for whales to be altruistic, to try to protect other lives. It's a fascinating field of study. The more instances like this video, the more compelling the arguments become. Finally, Nan's able to get back to her boat and exit the water in one piece. After 28 years of having amazing encounters with humpbacks, I just never imagined that this particular encounter would happen with me. I'm lucky to be alive. <laughs> so, Business week, we're back in the library.